It's a great pleasure to welcome back to What's Next, Romulan Pillay, who is the Managing Director of Philips South Africa. Uh, Romulan, great to see you again. How have you been? Well, thanks, and glad to be back on your show, Aki. Thank you. Uh, listen, I, I always enjoy chatting to you because you really give us incredible insights into the future of, of healthcare and what Philips is doing. Of course, Philips, one of the pioneers, one of the leading, uh, you know, healthcare providers in the tech sense and really uh, breaking ground and doing all sorts of interesting things. Could you uh, give us an update and, and provide us with some context about the uh, future health index, which we spoke about last time, which was absolutely fascinating. And and why why did you publish this report uh, again this year? Because you did it last year. And uh, just tell us a little bit about how it's collated, because the insights are absolutely fascinating of the Future Health Index. Okay, yeah, correct, Aki. We did do it uh, last year. In fact, it's now in its 10th year. So as you know, it, it, you know, it's our global thought leadership discussion platform of independent research. What was uh, different this year was it surveyed 16,000 patients and 2,000 healthcare professionals across 16 countries where South Africa was included. It specifically looked at uh, this year how AI can enable healthcare professionals to deliver better care to more people. Uh, the report surveyed the view of healthcare professionals to see the gaps that they needed to be addressed uh, in the adoption of AI. It also looked at patients' perspectives on the use of AI to treat them and if they would trust AI. Fascinating. Is this report done specifically for South Africa, Southern Africa, or is this, or is this a, a global index that Philips does? It, it's a global index. It covers 16 countries, but South Africa is a key part of it. Okay, fantastic. Great. Um, and, and this report, I mean, you mentioned it right now, and certainly AI is driving the conversation in whichever business uh, vertical you speak about. And it's no surprise that this year's report has a huge focus on AI. Why, in your opinion, why, in your opinion, is it such an important, uh, you know, uh, topic and focus this year? Because AI is a, is a major topic of conversation, not just in other businesses, but sp specifically in the healthcare sector. That conversation is loud. Yes, uh, Aki, quite correct. And specific to South Africa and South Africa healthcare, if you consider that we have some broad challenges, right, with a large number of patients, uh, we, do, we have a disparate access to care as well, and particularly like your ICU departments where you will have a shortage of, of nurses, etc. So AI is already streamlining and amplifying clinical capabilities in these areas, uh, basically to do more with less. Uh, I think by way of example, uh, if you look at ultrasounds that are being done, you know, even in areas where access to care is low, the hand of AI that's applied is able to give you diagnostic imaging a lot better and quicker under those conditions. Similarly, the CT scan where you can get a lot clearer images using the AI with a lower dose of contrast, which is also safer for the patient. And if you consider like in an ICU department at the bedside, the monitors, the AI is deployed to uh, collate vital signs a lot quicker, especially where you have a shortage of ICU nurses. So it, it does help and it does provide, uh, I think, a better diagnostic and a, so the doctors can spend more time on care pathways. Yeah, yeah, interesting stuff. Now, you mentioned that this is the, uh, I mean, the 10th year, if I'm not mistaken, of this particular survey. And, and, and you've been with Phyllis for several iterations of this report. So you've really seen some interesting things. And I even remember chatting to you about the last report and, and there were certain things that really stood out for you. Is there anything that stands out for you in this year's report when you compare to previous years, for example? Yes, it's quite clear. The research is highlighting that the healthcare system, you know, faces a burden. But it was interesting to see that South African healthcare professionals are more optimistic about the use of AI than the global average. And uh, I think provided we can, can bridge this trust gap, they call it a 17-point trust gap that was also highlighted uh, in the report. And the healthcare professionals, as well as the patients, are looking at you know how do we bridge this trust gap and how do we ensure that the healthcare professional 
spends more face time with the patient uh, versus less time. Mm. Very interesting. I, I want to touch on the trust because I think trust is such a big issue with AI. But before that, I just want to talk to you about the, what does the data say about the perception surrounding AI? What, what, how, how, what are people's perception surrounding AI? Yeah, clearly, I think for healthcare professionals, their perception is that it's a lot more positive towards the uh, adoption of the AI. And the data supports this, right? And I can also see it in the way the technology is being adopted at the hospitals. But for example, your patients, uh, you know, at least a third of patients feel their condition deteriorates if they're in longer waiting periods to get treatment. So clearly there's room for AI to reduce, for example, uh, waiting periods and, you know, thereby saving lives uh, in an environment where you have very high administrative tasks that can be um, minimized or be made more effective through the use of, of AI. But the perception uh, also takes it a step further. I think while there might be a tendency to think that uh, AI will reduce the face time that a doctor spends with the patient, it will actually do the opposite by you know making the routine tasks and the operational tasks a bit easier. It will actually free up the time for doctors to spend with the patients face to face and spend more time on patient outcomes and building better care pathways. That's so interesting, hey? So the, the AI is actually uh, assisting doctors um, and giving them better insights, but allowing them to spend a lot more quality time with the patient, which is absolutely fantastic. And it makes so much sense, right? Because when you think about doctors, they're constantly working under pressure. There aren't enough doctors and specialists in the country so if the AI can assist the doctor and augment what the doctor is doing, it gives the doctor better quality time with the patient, and that's brilliant. We spoke about trust earlier, and um, you know that's the one thing about AI is not is the trust factor, and and you spoke about building trust. What does that actually look like in practice? Yeah, I think uh, from what we can see from from the data, uh, I think I already mentioned the one where patients are concerned that maybe AI will reduce the amount of face time with the doctor. So the need for that human intervention, that human touch introduces a level of, of mistrust. However, as I indicated, the AI will actually create more time for the doctor to spend with the patient. Then if you look at uh, data sets that are used from the AI, right, there's a tendency that that might uh, enhance uh, existing disparities. But here, uh, the research showed that you can actually overcome this by using mainly more broader, broader representative data sets, but also to encourage more collaboration between the doctors and the patients to keep the human factor there, right? So that uh, you can overcome that, that trust deficit uh, in that equation. Very interesting. So, 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 so the insights are absolutely fascinating that are coming out. And um, when you look at, um, the, I guess that when you look at what's coming out of this research, it must present yourselves at Phyllis, at Phillips Romulan and doctors as well, and and healthcare providers and hospitals etc. with unique opportunities. So, uh, are you seeing any of those unique opportunities for Southern Africa when it comes to AI adoption in healthcare? Because I imagine it must open just you know massive opportunities out there. Absolutely. Similar to the examples I used earlier, if you consider that, you know, in the CT scanning phase, uh, many of our customers that have adopted it are currently already using it, right, to do more clear images with a lower dose of contrast, right? And then also to re reduce the uh, repetitive and admin tasks. Similarly, a lot of your academic and government hospitals that have adopted the our MRIs and where the AI is applied, are also experiencing, for example, faster times in doing the radiotherapy planning, which would normally take, I mean, in some instances that would take normally a month, these are being reduced to, you know, 72 hours in, in some instances. And the other, other example I gave was uh, a lot of your hospital groups, particularly the private groups, have deployed uh, the monitoring environment with the AI in the ICU departments so that, you know, where you have a shortage of ICU nurses, they can actually have the AI collate the vital signs and then 
to early risk warning uh, so that there's the appropriate response from the nurses and the doctors. So I clearly see this, and this is across uh, South Africa and, and Southern Africa. It's incredible, incredible technology. So when you give, when you see the, 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 the rapid evolution of technology and its role in healthcare, which is very clearly evident, and I think that uh, we're going to see this just uh, growing exponentially over the next few years, and, and this year, of course, being AI-focused, which you mentioned, what are the key trends that you are keeping an eye out for? Uh, I think the first one is clearly, you know, to move to a situation where you have better preventative care, right, so that you can prevent the actual diseases from happening. So to use the data and the AI to help uh, doctors and clinicians and, and the hospital groups to be able to, to do that, to do that preventative care better but then also to uh, empower patients with the information that they need uh, to be able to manage their care better as well, right, and, and play a bigger role in preventative care. I think this is going to be key. And then also having access to the data through AI, I think it creates a more empowered patient because at the end of the day, the patient owns his or her medical data, and this is critical as well. But the, the last trend is that you're definitely going to see a lot of collaboration going on between companies like ourselves and, and other companies. Uh, you can't do it alone. There's going to be the emergence of these partnerships to collaborate. And as I said before, to make sure that uh, it's human-centric, the solutions that are being developed. Yeah, yeah interesting. And, 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 and Philip, um, um, Sorry, my apologies, Romulan. Um, if there's one piece of information from the report that you think everybody in the local healthcare sector needs to know, what would that information be? I think that, you know, AI is no longer a nice to have. It's going to be an imperative, especially given the healthcare concerns, the high disease burden and the uh, staff shortages that we have in a country like South Africa. The other area is that I think for us not to uh, take too long with the investment around this infrastructure, because I think uh, it needs to be done now, especially with the disease burden that we have in our country. And besides, as the research showed, your healthcare professionals are already quite optimistic, even more so than the global average. So the adoption will be there, the training will be there, the skills transfer will be there, and the patients will benefit. Yeah. You, you know, actually, Romulo, that's the one thing I wanted to ask you was, uh, you know, regarding the investment, you know, because um, I, I've, I've seen some of the, I've had surgery recently, so I saw some of the high-tech uh, Philips stuff that they're using, especially with the MRI stuff that you mentioned. And of course, it, it is a big investment, but when you look at the benefits and you look at the speed at which the technology is moving and giving you the results, you know, it's all quantifiable, so it makes complete sense to upgrade equipment, to move to this new technology that we've been talking about. Is there, um, is it happening at the pace that it should be happening globally, or is, is South Africa matching the change of upgrading the, the healthcare tools that we use in big hospitals, or are we kind of lagging a little bit, little bit behind? Where, where are we when we compare ourselves globally? So what I can see, Aki, from... The, you know, in the marketplace and my customer groups, there's a huge adoption taking place right at the moment. But if I draw from some of the research findings from last year uh, and the previous year, you'll find that the healthcare professionals don't believe that the investment is happening at a quick enough rate, right? Particularly in, in, in public sector as well. Uh, I mean, uh, we have really smart doctors in both the public and, and private segment. And uh, it's just the disparate number of patients that need to be treated and you add to that the staff shortages, and et cetera, uh, it needs to be done at a faster rate, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and Romulan, is the future healthcare index available um, publicly? Is it something that people can download? Will they find this on the Philips website? Yes, absolutely. On the Philips website, there will be a link to the uh, report to be downloaded, and it's free, of course. Absolutely. I think it's such an important report that you guys do because it really gives us insights and it, it really makes what you're talking about really tangible and keeping 
the tabs and the finger on the pulse of what's happening in healthcare. And of course, the speed at which AI is moving, it's, uh, it's become very evident in this year's report that we simply cannot hold back and, and procrastinate and wait to really move to forward with the trends with regards to AI, because it really makes such a massive difference, especially in a, in a, in a, in a sector like healthcare. And uh, Mr. Pillay, thank you very much for joining us for this episode of What's Next. Uh, Romulan Pillay is the Managing Director for Philips Southern Africa, sharing some really important insights. And if you go to philips.com and you look up the Future Health Index, you'll find that uh, that report, absolutely fascinating insights. And uh, a big thank you to you, Romulan Pillay, for sharing those insights for us. Romulan is the managing director of Philips Southern Africa. Really fascinating insights. And visit the website, philips.com, and look out for that future health index. It's absolutely fascinating. Romulan, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Aki, and thank you to your guests as well. <laughs> <laughs>